Hey kids, it's me, Frankie Fran. Um, I thought it would be fun to try to show you how I make my little animations. If anybody's familiar with some of the cartoons that I've done, uh, I did a movie called uh, Lord of the Rings by George Lucas, seen there, um, which got a, got a few hits. This is the with sound version, but the first version got like 2 million hits, which was really cool. Made that a long time ago. Made that about 11 years ago. Um, and it was featured in, clips from it were featured uh, in the documentary The People vs. George Lucas, uh, as well as its counterpart video, which is right here. This was called How George Lucas Might F Up Indiana Jones 4. Um, and basically the whole idea behind it was that you, we, you know, we would have kind of these parody drawings of directors being interviewed and kind of mock them, and I would do their voices. And uh, uh, it would be called, like, well, kind of like a DVD interview style but make them say the ridiculous shit that I know that they think and feel. Um, and people seem to like them. So the, the whole thing is I can't draw. Uh, I have no sense of, of how to draw. Um, the only thing I can do is I can do pretty good impressions, uh, and I can spend a whole lot of time trying to make something look okay. And in this, right now we're looking at George Lucas. Um, you can see that really it's just his head tilting. I just paused it there. It's his head tilting. It's his eyebrows moving. Um, you know, every now and then his eyes might widen and his mouth moves for the most part. For these cartoons, uh, back in those days, I actually used to have to animate each mouth frame by frame. Um, so like if he made like an O sound, I would go to li literally an image of, in my editing program of him going O. And then if he went E, I would do E, et cetera, et cetera. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like with sound. Well, he's out there shooting. <laughs> Don't appetite. Right, so no, 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 George is a visionary. You know, even to this day, I, I totally, totally cried during episode three. three. Okay, so that looks pretty good, except it takes a really, really long time. Uh, so just recently, the same guys who made The People vs. George Lucas, they uh, they asked me to make another cartoon sort of for, um, or you know, something in this style, for their new documentary called Doc of the Dead, which is kind of this uh, this exploration of, uh, of zombies in culture over the last ten years. And so I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to maybe profile like ten really, uh, really prolific directors, uh, and kind of see what the, what kind of zombie movie they would make. So uh, I wrote it. I wrote the dialogue on a Saturday, and I completed it by the following Thursday. It's a five-minute-long cartoon. I can't show it to you because technically I'm not allowed to. But here it is. Here's just like some of it uh, muted. And you can see the mouth is different. The mouth isn't kind of frame by frame the way it was, but it's still animated. Um, so I've, I've found a technique, I found a piece of software that's going to allow me to automate the mouth, and other than that, it's pretty much the same style, but how did I get it done from a Saturday to a Thursday? It's a really quick turnaround time, and that's exactly what I'm here to show you how to do. I'm kind of going to use this new cartoon as a use case to show you how to do that. Um, but other than that, I just have a blank Mac, uh, and you can totally do this on a PC. Everything we're going to do, you can do on a PC. The programs we're going to use are Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere, uh, Microsoft Paint, believe it or not, we're going to get there. Uh, again, I'm not talented and I can't draw, so you're going to see everything that goes into somebody who's talentless. And um, we're going to use an After Effects plugin called Lip Sync. Um, so, all right, so starting with, all right, so here's here's an interview with Peter Jackson, and it actually uh, should look a lot, an awful lot like the, uh, the cartoon image that you just saw, because I got it from there. Can't draw. <laughs> so... We're going to take a screen grab of Peter Jackson, uh, and you want to bump it up to as full res as you possibly can, which might reload the video. And, um... All right, fine. And I'm going to full screen it. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit, I'm going to hold shift command three. I hear a little cha and that means that I've taken a screen grab and it's gone to my desktop. If you were on a PC, you could just hit the print screen button. That would put it in your clipboard contents. You could post it to uh, any image editing software that you want. But there's PJ. Right. Uh, let's say that that's the, that's the pose of him I want. Now, for these cartoons, uh, because I'm going to automate the mouth and it might look a little kind of, I don't know, stale, not very um, dynamic visually, uh, I like to take a few. So what I'll do normally is uh, I'll go back to PJ and maybe I'll you know, just use the left and right keys to find, you know, maybe... Maybe that. that. That image makes him look really, like, contemplative and maybe almost, like, a little, um, like, embarrassed to keep talking or something like that. So maybe I'll take a few, or that one looks like he's, like, looking at me dead on. Um, so I'll take a few. I'll do, like, maybe four or five per interview with, with each person. Uh, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we'll just do the one. Um, 
So let's open that up into, not into Photoshop, I'm very sorry. Oh no, sorry, we do have to go to Photoshop first. We have to go to Photoshop because we have to make sure that the source of any image that we're gonna do, that we have to reformat it to 1080 by 1920 because the final video is gonna be in HD. Um, and we wanna make sure that everything is formatted the same. So this image right here is probably just the resolution of my laptop screen, 1366 by 768, that's exactly right. So I'm gonna uh, select all, Apple A, Apple C to copy. I'm gonna open a new document and I'm gonna make it 1920 by 1080. And 72 uh, should be fine for the DPI. Yeah, whatever. And look, so when I paste it in, it's all not right. I've got this YouTube bar at the top. That's all not good. So I wanna make this Right. I want to go to Edit, Transform, Scale, and hold the Shift key to scale it up proportionally so it's not just like loosey-goosey all over the place. And there you go. There's PJ at 1080. And I'll say Apply. There we go. Everybody get that? So uh, I want to save this as a file because now, and I'm sorry to... This is where somebody who's smarter than me can jump in and be like, you fucking idiot, this is how you do it. But I, I don't know how to... You, what I need to do is I need to trace PJ along the lines around the outside of his head, his beard, everything, because that's going to be kind of the, uh, the lines that we use for our final drawing. And for the life of me, I know they got this pen tool in, uh, I mean, look at this. I don't, I don't, what the fuck is all this? I really don't know how to, I mean, I know how to use Photoshop on kind of a basic level. Like, I don't even know how to get rid of it once I've made it. Look at that. Just step backwards. Just, just, just get out of here. Just stop. Yeah, like I don't know how to do this, so I gotta bring it into Paint. Now you might be asking, Frankie, Microsoft Paint was made in like 1993. How are we gonna get that on your Mac computer? I have it on my Windows computer. How do I get it on a Mac computer? I believe I Googled for uh, uh, Port Mac Microsoft Paint, and yeah, this some dude put like there's a, a YouTube clip of it. Hey. And uh, and if you look into the descriptions, or the description, Paint for Windows 7 and up. There's the download link. So I, I actually like the really old paint, the one from way back. Uh, so there's a download link for Dropbox. I downloaded that, I installed it, and now I have paint on my Mac. So getting ahead of ourselves, we've got to save this file. I'll just save it to the desktop for now. Um, and this needs to be something that I can bring into paint and draw on top of. So either a JPEG or I, I actually like PNG because that actually uh, uh, preserves a lot of the image. Um, we'll say uh, PJ1. Right. Cool. Let's open paint. I just did a spotlight search for it. It's an installed program just like any other. It is a port for Mac, so it's not it's not perfect. And I'm gonna go to open. It's on my desktop. There it is. And there he is in his full glory. So check it out. So I want to um, I want to use the line tool at the most thick, and I'm going to use bright red because we want something that we can see later. We can change the color later, but I'm going to use bright red to to trace the whole thing. Okay. So I'm going to start down here, um, and just I'm just using the line tool, just bit by bit. Uh, oopsie! Already made a mistake. Going to undo that. In Paint, you can undo three times, so don't get too ahead of yourself. Just always be clicking and releasing. And um, I'll tell you what, I will save you some time and do this by myself while I'm not recording. But yeah, for the, you might be wondering, like, well, what do you do for the beard? Well, I just kind of like... See, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's, it's a cartoon. It's meant to be a little bit of a caricature. It's supposed to kind of capture his general essence without um, being, you know, photorealistic in any kind of way. So any kind of scraggly bits, I just keep going. Just keep driving through. All right, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, and we're back. So now I'm completely, I've completely traced them. Now just a couple of quick notes uh, that I don't want to forget to tell you. Um, for one thing, so all of this red is going to turn black. We're going to turn it all black, like just black, black kind of inked trace lines. So that means that anything that's boxed off, like for instance this ear, which is completely closed off, um, any, anything that's going to be a different color than something else should be blocked off. Um, otherwise, it's going to be hard to use the paint bucket tool 
to color like the hair and the ear if this line isn't here or if it's not blocked off. Same for like this hair, this lip, that's going to be the, you know, the eyes. And another note about the eyes, it can be a little bit tricky to, um, to, to get those quite looking right. Um, tracing over them doesn't always do the trick. Uh, I'm going to show you some tricks on how to do that, but you may have to kind of just play around uh, it, it, at this paint level, uh, stage to, uh, to get that done. But that's where the darks of his eyes are. The green is in the background, and he also had like a little reflection. So we're going to do little white dots on the eyes as well. And one final note, when we bring this into the mouth articulation software, we're going to need to be able to show the software a straight line, like the mouth completely closed. So you want to make sure, so this is going to be our mouth right here, that straight line. If we caught him in a pose that was open, we would want to, um, we would want to close it right at this stage. We want to just draw a line straight through it. Uh, and close that up. And if, if, if his lips looked weird at that point, we should shrink those down too. So uh, I think we're ready. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to pull it into Photoshop. And I'll show you how we do this. All right. So file open and we called that pj1.ping. For some reason, this, this crazy Mac port of paint uh, flips it upside down. So the first thing I have to do is, uh, well, you know what? You know what I like to do? is it throws it into this background layer, and I want to get it out of the background layer. So I'm going to right-click that, or in a Mac, Control-click, or, or, or a two-finger click. Duplicate layer. Uh, sure, background copy. And we're going to delete the background layer. Okay, so that's gone. So now we can actually have like a true background. So I'm also going to flip this upside down. Transform, flip vertical. Cool. And I'm going to take the trusty old magic wand, and I'm going to knock the tolerance down to zero. And what that means is that anything that's red, it just picks up on what's red. Every little pixel, it doesn't try to guess what's around it, and you know anything that's kind of a tinge of red, no, 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 zero. And uh, we don't want to click contiguous. So if that's checked, make sure to uncheck that. Otherwise, it'll just check. Like if I click the eyes, it'll just get the eyes. We want to uncheck that. So I'm going to click like the biggest area, and it selects all of our red. And I want to turn that all black. So I'm going to make both colors, the foreground color and the background color, full black. And I'm going to turn the paint bucket tool into the gradient tool. And I'm just going to draw a line wherever. Oh, yeah. I'm on the wrong kind of gradient. See up at the top left here? You want that to be solid black. Okay? So now let's try again. Ah, there he goes. Now he's completely black. And I just did a, uh, while that was still selected, I did a Command C or Edit Copy. And I'm going to do Command V to paste. And there he is. I'm going to use the Select tool and try to get him to hover over. It's always useful to, to enable the Snap, View Snap, so that it snaps right on. There you go. And now I'm, I'm going to hide this background layer because we're not going to need it. But there he is. There's PJ. Oh, my God. Now we just have to color him, right? So I've actually already picked out my colors for Peter Jackson. Um, so you can pick out your own colors. I don't give a shit what you do there. But we're going to use the paint bucket tool. And we're just going to use, like, primary colors. At least this is what I do for my cartoons because, again, it's just, we're going for kind of this caricature. So paint bucket tool. I've already got a skin tone picked out. If you're looking for a good skin tone, you could always take a screenshot of one of my cartoons that's on YouTube and just borrow that. Um, so there's all the skin. There's his ear as well. And then I also have something picked out for his lip. Just the bottom lip there is all we took. Something picked out for... Remember, like, in the, in the photo, he actually had, like, many shades of gray and, like, black and gray. Well, again, we're just going with one solid primary color. We're not being very special with this, very precious with this. Uh, got his little suit picked out. He's looking great. All right, this, this part's actually kind of fun. It's kind of like a coloring book. It goes very fast. There's his eyes. There's his the black of his nostril. And I think we're just missing white. And take kind of I never like to go all black or all white with anything. Um, especially not all black because we used all black on the trace lines. And so if we ever want to lift that color out or we want to swap that color quickly, 
Uh, it'll be a lot harder to do it that way. Um, so there's just white of the collar. And also don't forget the eyeballs or the whites in his eyes. Um, and again, just to, to talk about, like, if you wanted to lift the color real quick, you're like, ah, oh, that's that color of coat's not good enough. Just use the magic wand tool, just like we did with the lines, and click the click the color in the coat, and you can um, delete it if you'd like, and go back. And notice that we, we still have contiguous unchecked, so it, it takes everything, but suppose we just wanted that block. You can click contiguous, and just point, gone, right? So that's that. Um, and I think we're done. I think we are all done with coloring Mr. Peter Jackson. Now, uh, uh, you can find a different background for him. You can go online, find like some you know living room or something and put him behind that. Uh, but I kind of like the background that he was against in the first place. So I'm going to now re-enable. I'm going to click uh, the little eyeball next to the, that background layer, and he's just going to be sitting in front of it now. So see, now it kind of has that like you know, like it's a cartoon sitting in the real world sort of a look. And I kind of like that. Um, but what I want to do is see the, how we drove right through, uh, the wisps in his hair. So now it looks kind of like we drew over it. Well, if we blur the background a little bit, it'll kind of have that, that, uh, depth of field lens effect, like that documentary looking effect as well as kind of help us out with that. So I'm going to check that background layer. I'm going to go to filter blur and Gaussian blur. And yeah, like 8.2 is pretty high. You can even go for something that's this washed out. You could even go higher than that. I think that's a little too much. I think we want it to look almost like a drop shadow, that, that, that remaining hair that's in the background there. So that's good. That looks good. Um, and now we're going to save this as a PSD, a Photoshop file, so that it maintains the layers that we have in it. So if we ever want to go back, you got to kind of consider, like, well, what if I want to go back and I want to fix any of this or change any of this? That way you can do that. PJ1.psd sounds good to me. So, now we have to do two things. We have to record the audio uh, that he's going to say, and we have to... Uh, oh, you know what? Before we do that, I just want to remind you real quick, those little reflections in the eyes. Let's, let's get that done right now. Just take the paintbrush tool and, I don't know, knock it down to like... seven. Just give him a little... Dunk. Because even though we're going to spend all this time on the mouths, the eyes are what people look at. And see so see how that brings them to life a little bit more? All right, so I'm going to save that again. So we've got to record the dialogue, and we've got to automate the mouth movements. Um, we're going to go to everybody's favorite audio recording program, Audacity, which uh, you can just Google for and download. It's totally free, and you can just <clears throat> record audio. It's what it's there for. You can also do kind of like a little audio editing if you want to, you know, if you do a few takes and you want to get it right. You, you literally press record. So here we go. I'm going to do a take of PJ. Uh, hello. I'm actually doing this as part of um, sort of an online tutorial uh, to help people make their monster movies and ape movies and New Zealand pictures. Stop. There it is. Got my little thing here. So I think I, I said stop at the end, so we can just highlight that and delete it. And at the beginning, how did it sound? There's some leader here. Uh, hello, I'm... All right, so that's where it starts. So let's just delete that, and oh my god, we're done. Uh, so not save that. Save that would save it as a uh, an Audacity project. We want to do an export. File export. Um, save as. We can save it under the... the desktop, we'll save it as PJ Voice. And yeah, you can save it in a variety of formats. Uh, we're going to stick with uh, Microsoft WAV file because we're going to bring this into um, After Effects, and I'm told that After Effects is kind of most pleased with WAV files. I don't know. I've never actually seen that in action, or if that's true. Oh, fuck off, Java. All right. So save. Um, and it looks like you could put in metadata here if you wanted, but I don't want to. We're done. Let's make sure that it's actually there. So, I, no, I don't want to save my Audacity file. You could if you had, like, a lot of stuff that you were editing. Um, let's one by one hide. We also do hide all. But let's just make sure. It's part of um, sort of an online tutorial 
uh, to help people make their monster movies. And I there it is. Doesn't sound great because I'm using an onboard laptop mic, but I'm trying to just show you how easy this can be done. If you want a better one? Go get a better microphone. Um, and plug it into your laptop. Use the exact same program. So we, we need to automate the mouth, right? So we're going to do that with just this one image. So I'm going to pull this into After Effects, Adobe After Effects, which I already had open, but you can always just do like a you know, After Effects. I use CS6. I'm on you know the most latest uh, version as of the recording of this. And what we want to do is pull in, the very first thing we want to do is pull in that audio clip. So import file, and we save it to the desktop, right? pjvoice.wave. And if we click this, see this little none tab over on the left here? Let's click that and pull PJ Voice down to, that's the composition window. And doing that's going to create a new composition in After Effects. And we can see it's as long as the audio is, right? It's about 10 seconds long, according to this timeline. So now in the bin, we have PJ Voice, which is a composition, and PJ Voice.wave, which is an asset. Now we're going to pull in our PSD file, which is the image of PJ. So pj1.psd was the final. Uh, yes, we want to merge layers, right? Because we want both layers in there. And we're going to pull that down and stick that on top of the voice. Um, if you have multiple images, which we're not going to do today, but if you have multiple images, you could um, you could stack them. And After Effects, you could just go crazy with. I'm not good with After Effects, so we're just going to stick with this very simple thing. There's PJ. There's the voice. How do I automate the lip sync? You need a plugin for that shit. And I use this one. It's called Auto Lip Dash Sync. You can Google for it. You can buy it. Uh, you can hire it. And um, this is what I use. Uh, it's it's uh, I can't remember exactly how to set up an After Effects, but it was really simple. I downloaded it, and there were instructions, and uh, got it right set up in After Effects. And that's what its purpose is, is to use After Effects as a lip syncing animation tool. So I'm going to hide Chrome. I've already installed that. I've already gotten that all ready. And the way to activate it is highlight the image that you're going to be animating, and then click Window, and click Auto Lip Sync .js, down to the bottom. Right. So now we want to create a mouth rig. And it's very important that we selected that image first, otherwise none of this would work. So it's asking me, I'm going to close out of this window, it's useless, but this one's, this one's important, you got to keep this open, and pull it down here. It's asking me to take this line that's on the picture of PJ, and put the corners of it across his straight closed mouth. So remember back when we were drawing it, I said that this would be important? Well, here's exactly why. Let's make sure that that's exactly on the mark. So I'm going to magnify this by 200. I'm going to take the hand tool at the top left and pan over to here. It's just not quite right, right? So this would, if I left this the way it is, it would try to like separate his mustache from the bottom of his mustache, and that's not good. That's not how a man works. And frankly, I did kind of a lousy job of keeping this straight. I mean, really what I want to do is make do this. So this could actually probably work. That would separate, um, see right where the line is. Above the line would be his top lift, lip, and uh, below the line would be the bottom lip. And I think that's okay, because it just had a little bit of top lip poking out below the mustache. That should work. So let's call that done. And from here, we just click next, 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 done. So continue. It's going to tell you, like, here's how to, like, shape in the mouth. Like, it, it, it gives you some options for drawing it. We don't have to do any of that because we've already done that now. Continue. It's going to add its little things. Like, it wants you to, it's like, yeah, go ahead and shape it. Now we've done that. Continue. And there it is. See that? It took those, it separated out the top lip from the bottom lip. Continue again. And finish. I told you, it's just continue, continue, finish. Done. Zoom back out to 100%. And there he is with his most open mouth. Um, and so it's going to analyze the audio clip that I gave it, the 10 seconds audio clip, and it's just going to do its thing. So I'm going to go up to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and uh, the default settings for this are fine. It, it, it's very uh, large. It's, it's lossless, uncompressed, but I kind of want it uncompressed. Uh, I'm going to make sure that saves to the desktop where the rest of our stuff is, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be the desktop. And click Save, and I'm gonna click Render. And I'll see you in a bit, because it's, see this progress bar? It's gonna render for the next uh, three to four minutes. So um, go get a cup of coffee, we'll be right back. And there it goes, there it goes to the very end. We're about to hear the sweetest sound in the world, the sound 
of a render completing, ladies and gentlemen. Be quiet, please. Oh, baby. Oh, we're all... Brownies are out of the oven, kids. So now we're going we're gonna to bring that, uh, that exported file into Premiere, Adobe Premiere, and that's where its final stop will be. So I'm going to hide that. I'm going to open Premiere, which is already open. I'm going to make a new project. Why not? Uh, save it to the desktop. We'll call it PJ Tutorial. And uh, it wants to know what preset, the sequence that you're going to lay it down in will be. You know, So we're going to be 1080p, 24 frames a second. That looks good to me. We'll name our sequence Peter Jackson. Even if you get your sequence, the settings wrong, if it doesn't match what the clip is going to be, uh, CS6 is pretty smart. It'll actually, much like Final Cut Pro, it'll be like, hey, the clip is different than the sequence. Do you want me to just change the sequence for you? And you can say yes. So let's do that. Look familiar? This should look an awful lot like After Effects, except now it's just a regular old video editing program. So we want two things, right? We want the file that we just uh, exported, which we call PJ Voice Move, and we want PJ Voice .wave. That's the audio and the video. We'll lay down the audio into track one. We'll make the monster movies and ape movies and remember that? Yes, you do. And we'll take PJ Voice .move, and we'll lay that right over it in the video track. Then we'll play it back for the first time and see our animation for the first time. Let's check it out. Uh, hello, I'm actually doing this as part of um, sort of slowing down because it's the you know it's not rendered. You could actually if you just press enter, you can you know render it. Like I got a lot of other things going on in the background, and uh, that's gonna take too long. But you get the idea, right? Is that you could you could play it back better. But that's why it wasn't looking right. But at first it looked really good, didn't it? Let's try it again. Uh, hello, I'm. Actually doing this as part of um, sort of an online tutorial trying uh, to help people make their monster movies and ape movies and New Zealand pictures. Whatever. Um, if you scrub through, you can see how much better it is. Okay, so you think, like, well, we're all done, aren't we? We've animated the damn thing. Let me, let me go. Uh, except that's not really a very good-looking animation, is it? And it didn't quite, uh, look like what I showed you at the beginning of the, of the uh, tutorial. It's just him staring at us with his mouth moving. That's not an animation. That's like a that's like a Conan O'Brien like late night sketch. Uh, what we want to do is take multiple versions of him and make him say the same thing, and then cut between them. So I've already prepped. Uh, uh, I've already prepped this completely um, in the final version of the of the use case that I was talking about. We're gonna go over to that. Let's go to sample. And no, I don't want to save changes. You have to excuse me, I'm going to now abandon um, what we then Look at all this. I can't show you any of this because they're not going to let me until the documentary comes out. But uh, uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool final version. But we're going to open the Peter Jackson sequence, right? Peter Jackson. And there it is. So what I did was I had four different versions of these. I stacked them all up on top of one another. And then, like, you know, it's like, okay, well, I want the one from track two to show. So I made sure nothing was above any of the tracks after track two, and so it shows yeah, I'm, that. I'm not new to zombies. I made brain dead. And then it switches to the other one. See how right now it's on the, the fourth track? Then it jumps back down to the first track, etc., etc. Whatever the... If you never edited in Premiere or Final Cut or anything, you'll know... You won't know that the uh, the topmost track is the one that displays on the screen. Um, so that's how I did it. I just crisscrossed through them. So let me, let me show you real quick what, what it looks like. Yeah, I'm, I'm not new to zombies. I made brain dead, but one of my favorite bits from that film was having... Again, like our other animations, having a hard time playing back, but you get the idea. It actually looks really nice. And then the one other thing that I also did was because it's like a DVD documentary, I make a little title, like Peter Jackson. Remember earlier, I was like, oh, he's from Apes and New Zealand and stuff. Well, there's my little title. <laughs> it's a comical title, purposely comical. Normally, you would say, like, what movies you directed. Instead, I was just like, Hobbits, Apes, New Zealand. It's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. And you, you, you lay that over the top. So that, all, that is, all that title is, it's, it's a Photoshop file. It's a PSD with text and no background layer. Um, so it's just translucent. Drop across is all on the front and back. Holy shit, when we play back, there's the title. Yeah, I'm, I'm not new to zombies. I, I made Brain Dead, but one of my favorite... Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to close out of, it, it, it could be just like too many damn things open. Never, uh, yeah, we don't have to save that After Effects file that we were making. We already made the, uh, 
And we're going to close out of paint. I'm sorry. Don't cry. And one more attempt at playback. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm, I'm not new to zombies. I made brain dead, but what am I? Still looks like crap. But if we rendered it, it would look fine, and we're going to do a final export of it. So let's say that this is the final cartoon, and of course this wouldn't be the final cartoon. If you were going to do many directors, you're going to do like 10 directors like I did. You have one after another. And what I do is I make a master timeline, main timeline. See, and I keep trying to keep everything kind of organized in the bin. Um, and let's open the main timeline. And all I do is I go to each bin each little folder, and I drag down, like I did one with M. Night Shyamalan, I drag that sequence into the timeline. You can nest timelines. So you can kind of treat the whole timeline, the whole Peter Jackson timeline, as though it's one big video clip. Let me show you what I mean. Peter Jackson timeline, bunk, there it is. Now it looks like it's one big video clip. Play them all back to back, throw some music in underneath the whole thing, make sure they all have titles um, that say who they are. Uh, at one point, I think, in the Peter Jackson one, I actually cut to a video uh, of his movie Brain Dead. Right? So there's that. Put a title on that. And that's it, man. <laughs> I, that's literally all it is. And if it's funny and your impressions are funny, uh, it should work. You know, throw a little title card at the end, Red Cow Entertainment, uh, tell the updates to go away. And that's it. Um, show you how to do a final export in Premiere. It's real simple. You just choose the timeline you want to export, file, export media and uh, what I like about Premiere CS5 and above is it lets you match the sequence settings in the export so I like to click match sequence settings now it's going to be this HD MPEG um, you can choose to save that wherever zombie animation desktop whatever and you just click export and that's it so um, I don't know was that helpful did you guys enjoy that does that teach you anything about the process uh, it, you know, it still takes as you saw like tracing it still takes a while Exporting each and every automated lip sync takes a little while, but conception to completion, you know, six days or whatever the hell it was, so um, that can't be too shabby. Um, give it a try yourself. Perfect it. Tell me what I'm doing wrong, please. And uh, uh, if you want more tutorial videos, send me a message, and uh, we'll keep them going. If you want more cartoons, please watch. Take care.